Thank you. Anything else? <laughs> well, I can't promise that. <laughs> or fall into. Yeah. I got you. Okay, let's see here. I thought you were snapping at me like the nuns used to do. <laughs> no. <laughs> right before you smacked you in the head. Okay, we're coming to you live from the PD room of Grand Island High School. This is microphone number six. Jim <laughs> Microphone number five. Mike Ramsey. Oh, thank you. Right? Yep. I wish I had the voice of uh, You do. Microphone number four. Microphone number three, three, three. I can't come up with three. Big move. Big, well, I'm going with old time saver. I know. What's about uh, John Van Boxner number three? Number two, check, check, one, two, Tim Horton. Yes. Where there's a bit of Tim in every Tim bit. And number one, check number one, 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 one. Don Edwards, one at one point. One is a long number. And the podium mic, oh that's nice. Podium mic, nice and loud, because no one stands in front of it. One, two, three, one, two, three, podium, 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 podium. Yay. Natural sound as I walk toward the camera. You're probably hearing me fine. And that's our check, everybody. I'm going to mute. And here we go to mute sound. In three, two, one.
Okay, with us this evening, we have Glenn Roebuck, trustee, Jay Grover, trustee, Sherry Steffens, trustee, Jude Kuhn, our district clerk, Dr. Brian Grant, superintendent, I'm Ashley Dreyer, president, Sue Marston, vice president, Joy Lamarca, trustee, Danielle Bruno, trustee, Mike Loria, assistant superintendent of curriculum, staff development, and human resources, Cheryl Cardone, assistant superintendent of pupil personnel services, and Dr. Ruby Harris, Assistant Superintendent for School Business and Finance. Uh, just a couple of announcements. If we could keep uh, the exit directly in front of me and directly behind me uh, clear in case we need to leave unexpectedly. And if you wouldn't mind silencing your cell phones, um, it would be greatly appreciated. If I could have a motion to approve the agenda for this evening, please. I'll motion. And a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. If I could have an approval, a motion to approve the uh, minutes from March 27th, please. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. Um, with us this evening, we have student ambassadors. If I could have the student ambassador from the middle school, please, Sandy DeSantis. Good evening, Board of Education, Dr. Graham, and Grand Island community. Uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick and I would like to welcome two VCMS student council members to come up and talk about what we have going on at the middle school. Good evening. My name is Lena Slayman. And I'm Sammy DeSantis. We are the multimedia specialist for the middle school student council. We hosted our, our final event, the Shamrock Shuffle, on March 17th. Lots of students came and had cotton candy played on inflatables and danced to a DJ. There was also pizza, craft soccer, and other activities. We have wrapped up all our events for the year, but we still will be putting on spirit weeks and other activities. Soon we will begin preparing for next year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And for the high school, we have Sophia Bukhari. Um, good evening. Um, I'm Sophia Bukhari. I'm Vice President of Student Council. And during the week of March 20th, 24th, the high school had their Clash of the Vikings Spirit Week. And on Friday the 24th, Clash of the Vikings event was held in the gym. The seniors placed first, the juniors were second, freshmen were third, and sophomores were fourth. The celebration of inspiration will be held on Thursday the 27th, where students will give speeches to teachers and staff on how they inspire them in some way. The high school spring sports have started. We have girls and boys lacrosse, boys tennis, track and field, boys baseball, and girls softball. DECA's Nationals is next week, the 22nd and 25th in Orlando, Florida. The National Academy of Finance went on a field trip to Canisius College for the Western New York Regional Academy Finance Conference, and the high school PTSA is having a plant sale fundraiser to benefit the PTSA scholarship. And this past Friday, distinguished alumni came to the high school and gave motivational speeches for the students' speeches. Thank you. Moving on to correspondence, recognition, and good news, we have the Grand Island Chess Club with us this evening. Um, I want to have uh, Mr. Kostanchuk and just do a little introduction to our amazing chess club. This evening, everyone, it is really my pleasure to introduce and honor our chess club this evening. It was probably about eight years ago that Ms. Sebleski and Mr. Crow began playing chess with kids in the library just for fun after school. And that soon turned into an actual chess club. Uh, seven years ago we formed the official chess club. We started in the middle school and gradually as our middle school students went up to high school we 
couldn't say no. We had to let them continue to play with us. And really, we have some founding players here um, who actually began the club. So I'm pleased to have uh, them here as well. But what I really want to say is this club is an amazing club for the middle school. It welcomes everyone, uh, which is part of our environment, which is part of our philosophy. Um, you'll find kids from different backgrounds, different ages, sixth graders playing against seniors. Um, and I really think that we have the best two coaches in all of Western New York because we consistently, yeah, we need to give them a round of applause. <laughs> I'm a little bit, um, I guess, uh, arrogant because uh, I like beating uh, <laughs> other private schools, seniors from other private schools. Having a sixth grader beat a St. Joe's senior uh, is really exciting. And when you're in a chess tournament, you can't applaud uh, in the <laughs> tournament room or you can't scream and cheer like you could at a football game. Um, but you still want to when you, when you see that happen. But uh, you know, nonetheless, I'm just so proud of the chess club and all the uh, things they've accomplished. They're, they're just great kids, great people, and we have two great coaches uh, who not only know the game of chess, but they also are great role models for our students. So congratulations to our chess team. So I know there's a lot to celebrate. If you could just briefly share with the board yes. and the community some of the great highlights this week. Yes, so um, it was funny. I walked down the halls because I honestly didn't know how many trophies we had won over the years. So if you're unfamiliar with how the chess club works or the Western Scholastic um, you know, chess tournaments that go on throughout Western New York, um, we compete monthly, sometimes twice a month. Um, it slowed down a little bit during the pandemic. Um, Mr. Pro and I met virtually with students still every week. And we opened up a platform in chess.com to be able to actually run tournaments within our group during those pandemic years. Um, but you meet with amazing people in the community, um, coaches at private schools, public schools. Um, we actually have won almost 40 team trophies over the last seven years. Um, individually, I was tallying, we've won over 80 individual trophies. So when you compete in a chess tournament, you not only play as an individual for individual trophies and recognition, you also play as a team. So your team scores are tabulated together um, against other teams in the area. We do have teams as far as Pioneer that come join us. We now have a team from Pennsylvania that heard about us, Bradford, that actually drive up and compete. Um, None of it would have been possible without the grant funds that we received from the PTA and the Grand Island Foundation. That really fostered our ability to, um, to purchase equipment, boards, um, and of course our support from administrators is phenomenal. Just this year, Mr. Fitzpatrick helped us purchase our own chess boards that are very, they say the Grand Island Chess Club, with our logo and everything. And we use those every Tuesday when we meet as a chess club, but we also use them for the tournaments that we host here in the high school. And we do have another one coming up uh, next Saturday in the high school, if any of you happen to be around. We, um, we play between 9.30 and about 4 p.m. the tournament runs. Um, but this year especially, we received a notification from Senator Sean Ryan's office. Um, he had seen our success, apparently, in the newspapers for certain tournaments, including the Blizzard Bowl, which is one of the largest tournaments in Western New York. It's hosted um, by a gentleman um, who owns a facility in Elma, New York, and he hosts it every year and provides all the trophies. And we, we had taken first place there again. So um, Senator Sean Ryan's office reached out to congratulate the students and here with us this evening, I have the parents who we could not do this without because they drive every month to all the tournament locations with their children um, and they support us. Whenever I ask for anything for tournaments, um, they come in with donations, they help and support every step of the way. 
This evening we have our tournament players with us. So even though the chess club is comprised of about 40 to 45 students, we have about 12 to 18 that play at the tournament level. Um, we have unrated and rated players. Um, we have a player who plays in the open section as well. Um, but again, we have just had a great deal of success with our students. Every Tuesday, we offer a lesson based on what we're seeing them play at tournaments, um, or even within our own chess club. We um, provide lessons, instructions. We have a Google Classroom. Um, but I don't want to actually talk about it all this evening. What I would like to do is, because we have been active for seven years, we do have seniors with us this year that were there from the very beginning, and I would actually like them to share their accomplishments and their feelings about Chess Club with you, because unfortunately they will be graduating and leaving us this year. So our two seniors who are both rated players here with us tonight are Tanner Hawley and John Paul Sobleski. So I'd like them to talk to you and share with you their experiences. Just one quick question. Is that from my April 29th here in the high school, yes. Hello, my name is Tanner. I joined Chess Club in sixth grade because I just wanted to learn how to play the game and I really enjoy it. Chess Club has given me something to look up to, I mean luck up for every Tuesday and especially during the tournaments because I think they're fun and I got to meet a lot of new people and I got to make it <laughs> I got to make a lot of memories that I can't forget because of the fun. I mean, like I got to meet a lot of new people, and just I used I got to go to many new places. It was just a whole lot of. There's some pretty good. It was pretty fun. <laughs> but, but Chess was telling me how to be more responsible, help me believe in myself, and and it's made me smarter because Chess is a hard game, and like. I became a U U USCF, it's still a little difficult to pronounce, rated player in 8th grade. I cannot tell you how much I've enjoyed playing chess throughout the 7 years. There's a sense of accomplishment for winning both individual and team trophies. Because, well, you know, we've got trophies. Like, <laughs> and even during the pandemic, we still made some pretty good memories, and Mr. Pro, uh, Mr. Pro and Mrs. S, they made us go on and it was and it was pretty fun. Like we we made a way through it. Zoom carried pretty much. But uh, <clears throat> like we used the chess.com website. I'm sorry, that's another one. Uh, some of my best friend oh I'm with a lot of my good friends, some of my best friends and my uh, and some of my best memories I got from Chess Club. And so I'm proud to be a Chess Club player. Okay. Life is like a game of chess. In order to win, you have to make a move. But knowing which move to make comes with insight and experience that you learn along the way. The thing I love most about chess is that it discriminates against no one. Anyone can learn to play the game by joining our chess club. I have met students from all walks of life, and I have developed lasting friendships with chess players from various schools throughout Western New York. While I was in middle school, I became a rated United States Chess Federation player. I worked my way through the under-1300 section and into the open section, where I now play mostly adults. One of the most exciting things for me was receiving a letter of congratulations from Senator Sean Ryan, as well as individually signed certificates recognizing one of our many victories this year at the Western New York Blizzard Bowl Scholastic Chess Tournament in January. We have been quite fortunate to maintain our first place staff throughout this entire school year because we have learned how to successfully divide and conquer as a team. If you are unaware of how teams compete at these scholastic chess tournaments, every player competes individually in their respective sections, while the overall performances are then tabulated toward our final team score and standing. I have truly enjoyed being captain of the Grand Island Chess Club for the past four years as it has helped me develop my friend my leadership skills with students from all ages, and also given me the opportunity to help my fellow chess players develop their strategies and become better players. 
Being part of the Grand Island Chess Club has meant a great deal to me throughout my middle school and high school years, and both of my individual and team accomplishments will always be part of some of the fondest memories I have in the Grand Island School District. Is it okay, Mrs. Blisky, if we can get the coaches oh, and the kids up just for absolutely. older, are there so, so much so you guys want to come? No, okay. no. <laughs> <laughs> we can go on. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Yeah, come on. I'll go first. Three, two, one, and Mr. Fitzpatrick, and we'll have the parents. Parents, please, you can get up and want to center your picture. Yeah, let's give him another big round of applause. Great feedback on our staff development day in March. We did a variety of things. Our elementary teachers spent the day selecting different um, workshops or trainings to attend anywhere from working on um, working on learning more about the Ready Math program. Um, there were mindfulness sessions. There were uh, integrated technology sessions. They, they trained at Narcan. Many of our teachers elected to also participate in the self-defense class. So there was a lot of variety for our teachers. And I did want to mention the secondary teachers started their day with a diversity, equity, and inclusion panel, um, which I think was very informative. And I saw I saw he who just left actually was in our audience with one of our panel members. We had several students on the panel, as well as uh, teachers and even community members. Our very own Alice, who is often here to report on our board meetings. So it was a really great. Um, Activity. It was a really great day, and I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that we uh, got some really positive feedback on the day, and we were really proud of our students that were just um, But I am asking for one action item in motion on our field trip to Costa Rica. I know recently we approved one for our French um, students, and this one is for our Spanish students who will be looking to um, share the experience of going to Costa Rica from the 8th to the 15th of July in 2024. So we're looking for a are these students going to have identical who's going over or who is enrolled in Spanish 3 in this 23, 24, which one's too far along? <laughs> I, I know the teachers have promoted it to their students, but they have not actually selected who, which of these students will be going. But there are people who have their eyes out for it, and I know that. Just um, across everyone. Yeah, I'm sure you will shoot soon. <laughs> Okay, can I have a motion for an A, please? I'll move. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Abstentions? Motion carries 7-0. Moving on to personnel instructional. If I could have a motion to approve PI1 through PIP, PI3, please. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any extensions? Motion carried 7-0. 
No, I just I just wanted to thank uh, Hillary and Felicia for working together. Uh, in this appointment, you'll see that Mr. Williams will be leaving the elementary classroom and we'll the teacher and special assignment for dean of students at the high school. And I know that takes a lot of coordination and uh, appreciate our principals working together to make that happen. And of course, I appreciate uh, Dr. Patachi and having it backfill that position for Mr. Williams. So uh, thank you for everybody involved. And uh, moving on to personnel nine instructional, I have a motion to approve PNI one and PNI two, please. And a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried seven zero. And moving on to finance, looks like we have A through E for the motion. Or oh, wait, sorry. No, nope, yes, finance. Okay. Thank you. Um, so yes, we have A through E that require um, action. Um, so we have obsolete equipment for um, our IT department uh, that they're asking for. We have a donation of a thousand dollars to student council for uh, the beautification project in memory of Nancy Hayes um, by her children, Peter, Jody, Karen and Dana, and I also wanted to mention that she was an educator in our district for 44 years, so that is uh, pretty amazing, and I can't wait to see what happens with that. Um, we also have our Smart Schools preliminary plan. I believe there was a meeting that happened a week or two ago uh, pertaining to that, so that requires board um, action to be moved forward. We also Sorry, okay. We also have um, uh, the BOCI um, IPA, which is our uh, purchasing installment plan for BOCI that's approved and um, we function on a cycle of the IPA, each one being a five-year one, so there's always one that's falling off and we're, we're getting something approved um, so we can keep up with that. And I think those are... Truthfully, those are the action items before we do the board presentation of the budget. That also requires action. Do you want me to go through the informational part? Do you want to wait? I just don't know how you want to. We can probably do this. We should go through the budget first. Okay, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and just so you are aware, for information purposes, we have the fire inspection um, attached, budget transfers under 15000 uh, the check warrants for March, and we are getting caught up on our revenue status reports and treasurer's report. So I actually believe that the main meeting will have everything up to date um, in the working card. So we were glad to have it on there. Ruby, just before we move on to the budget presentation, right. can you see if the board has any yes. questions? Yes. Yes. She knows I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to go, uh, I have a quick question on this uh, Smart Schools preliminary plan. Okay. Um, I was at the meeting as was um, Terry. And I don't really have a question to the program because I think it's fantastic. And um, But there was a question, and I believe it came from you, Felicia, about the rooms that did not have touch TVs in them. Um, I know when we first rolled out the plan way back when, we put them in all, I thought we had put them in all of the um, classrooms. So I'm interested to know which rooms in our buildings that currently don't have a phone TVs, touch TVs, touch screens, whatever, um, what those rooms are and should we have them in there? I, I would think at this point all of our rooms, whether it's renewal math, um, reading, um, should have them all in there. And I guess I may have thought we already did, but if we can't put them into the program, I know we are removing some that are antiquated, outdated, but are there some that could be moved into those rooms if it's decided that all those rooms, I, I can't remember what room you had reading. mentioned. Was it reading? I apologize, it wasn't in my notes. I just know that you had mentioned. Um, so I don't know if that's something we could look at. Obviously, it's outside of the realm of this smart school plan. But if we just take a look at it, see if we can put all of our teachers in all of our rooms with touch TV. 
Smart schools is not technically a five-year plan. It's a funding pot. I will, I will use that word, a funding pot. And the dish, school, every school district is responsible for developing the plan to spend it down. So it, some school districts could spend it in a year, and then it was all gone. Um, the review period is cumbersome. So I think people did break it into chunks um, to see what their needs were as they moved along. But well, it's, it's so there's a program, and it'll be done, and we'll just have to find other funding options to continue. We won't stop replacing smart Right, like that's what I was wondering. It, it will go on, the that. funding will come from other locations. Mm -hmm. okay. Is, is so, it okay if Robin uh, addresses? If she would like to, if, if, if not, I just, uh, the plan or my question, it, or both. Okay. I just, I think I mentioned it to you before I walked out that day too. I think so, so, yeah. So so we have forty for the smart schools that we have forty five interactive TVs um, and the computers that go behind them are scheduled to be on this that's what's on the plan that we're asking for approval. We have about sixty five smart boards, that's the old school white interactive board left in the district. So that would leave us with about twenty that still would need to be replaced after that. So it's, it's a process. As far as rooms that don't have anything interactive, but neither a TV nor a, a whiteboard, um, they're few and far between. There's maybe maybe one in each building. Um, I don't know if there's any in the high school. I think they all have been active in there. But there might be one, like one of those small reading rooms or a small math room or something like that. Sometimes it couldn't fit a smart board, and oh, now maybe okay. it will be able to fit. Because some of them really are tiny. Um, we might like be able to look at one. Right? Yeah. I mean, well, great. what we've replaced up until now have really been broken boards. They're not even worth doing anything with. They, the old school ones have cameras in the corners, and when the cameras go, they're they're pretty much toast. Um, when we get more, as as we replace more, we're going to catch up to the ones that are dead and start replacing the ones that are just, it just happens to be an old smart board and we happen to have a new touch TV to put in there, then we could put something like that in another spot. If it yeah. fit and if it made sense. I just Absolutely, really yeah. Our teachers we, we, we definitely reuse like everything. I'm sort of I, I fanatic think about that. That's why, so. I, you know, when I heard that, I thought that there would be some that could be removed that need to be, yeah. I mean, that you'd have to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, they could get into the replacement. Even if sometimes sometimes we just put in a projector, if it's not interactive, but at least it can project on a wall or you know, depending on the space too right. sometimes. So yeah. we can at least get um, the spaces that don't have them that um, need them or would like to utilize them. That way we at least have a number so as we are going through the process of planning mm -hmm. that's not forgotten. Sure. Okay, Thank you. Any other questions? Is there any obsolete equipment here? Did we get any reimbursement for that or any charges or she's getting the last of us? Um when we buy stuff from BOCES, through BOCES, we have to give it back to BOCES. It's basic and we, we do it through a an electronic disposal place. But it's I don't honestly know where it goes, but we have to keep it back, and we do it through the electronic disposal. When it's not through BOCES, so we bought a lot of our Chromebooks, our first wave of Chromebooks with Smart Schools money. We were able to sell those. You don't get a lot for them, but we were able to sell the old ones that would not take security updates anymore to the company that we use to purchase parts. So we sort of have a credit now with them, and as we need screens, um, keyboards, kids love to pick keys off keyboards for some reason. So as we need these parts to repair Chromebooks, we go to this one company where we sold back our, our old ones. And we have a credit now. There. So we do get something. We do, yes. It's, it is tiny. It's really a shame. <laughs> but it's, it's the way of the world now with electronics, unfortunately. Any other? Before, for Robin. IPA, smart schools, or or obsolete equipment. Okay. Thank you. I, I just want to say to the smart 
the presentation that was given to us in the board, I get it, everybody's read it, it's, it's not going to change. I know it's a preliminary, but we want to think about just adopting it. So we're done, and if we need to, to go to the next meeting, and I guess there's time we're going to wait and listen to the budget presentation and approve everything, so there's time to think, get more questions or need more time, but if not, we could just go ahead and add that as an action. Okay, that's all. Thank you, do you want to get action on your items first before you? Because but you want to wait? Yeah, well, yeah. because the budget is yeah. perfect. Okay. A through D, okay. Just A through D and then do E separate, or do you however you that is when you do it. Because that's what you want to include this part. It is. It is on the D. Okay, it's okay. It's A through D. Okay. Do you want to do the budget separate? Sure. After the budget. Could you approve, or do you just want to do? We can just approve A through E after the budget presentation. Okay. 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 I will ask for a motion for A through items A through D under finance. Then, so just A through D. I will. And a second. And a second. Please. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0, and then we will go on the budget after. Yeah. Okay. Just want to thank the board for your hard work and our principal supervisors and our district office team as we've worked to balance the budget. And I thank everybody for their contributions in that effort. Also, I just want to make a comment. Um, it's disappointing that we do not have a budget that's been adopted by uh, New York State. Uh, it's been extended several times. We don't foresee an approved budget from your state for a while. It could be the end of the week, uh, but I know they're making some progress. But it is disappointing because our district, along with every other district in the state, has uh, is ready to adopt today as we are supposed to. And we are following that process to the T as, long, as well as our other uh, colleagues across the state. Some districts have already adopted their budgets. And so the, the thing that's important today for our board and the community to know is that we've been assured by some of the leaders uh, in our New York State Council school superintendents, um, I imagine ASBO has weighed in, we do not foresee any changes to foundation aid or to our budget uh, across New York State uh, from the state, uh, when the state finally adopts their budget. So we, we feel confident moving forward today that the numbers you see here and uh, all of the numbers will stay intact. If for some reason that changes, of course we will uh, follow the rules and regulations from the state to make sure that any changes uh, in, the, in the future could be uh, done legally and uh, within the scope of uh, the dates and times and uh, all the regulations that they have. But I just wanted to foreshadow that uh, this, this evening and I do I want to thank Ruby for all of her work and not only her work but her advocacy at the state level uh, to make sure that our uh, our budget and budgets across the state won't be changing anytime soon. So thank you, Ruby. All right. Okay, go ahead. Um, I know that uh, tonight we're we're going to get through all you know the final numbers. So I thank you for that. And is there anything um, just that you wanted to highlight, Ruby? No, no, there's no uh, update. No, no changes, right? Once we do have an update, um, I will push that out to the board. We can also put it up on the website so people know that information, but that's still the same slide from February. Um, this slide has changed slightly. You will see uh, the foundation aid line, and then you see foundation aid high impact tutoring set aside. There was a number there before. It was $208,000. That number is now within foundation aid. Um, that's really been the pushback and the back and forth on the school district's ends of planning. I'm going to be honest, I don't know where the state is in that discussion. Well, we do know that the Assembly and the Senate are in favor of stopping Correct. the powers that be from carving out dollars and making us use it in a certain Correct. way. So we think that pushback has occurred, and we believe that the governor will accept that pushback. Correct. And um, I did speak to colleagues of mine 
um, who have already had their budget approvals who said, oh no, it's part of foundation aid and that's the way they um, presented it. If something were to happen, we would address that as necessary within the numbers that are here. It would not be uh, us coming back and saying, oh, we're being increased in the budget an addition of $208,000. So we just put that together. Anything else you want to address here? Um, no, it does talk about the foundation aid survey, but I include those results um, on the next page. Nothing has changed um, in reference to this, but I'd like to show it again, right? So it's not a just flash between before people's eyes. So these were the survey results. A lot of the things that we incorporate within our budget, um, when you take into consideration receiving $2 million from the state and us being able to keep all of our programs, all of our staffing, all the things that we had um, input within the last year or two, when you really look back at those increases, um, the funds the state gave us allow us to continue to work on achieving grants, um, work in different ways for social and emotional health. So those things were discussed, they were incorporated, and then there are also other things that, uh, such as like football that was brought up in reference to athletics that has nothing to do technically with the foundation aid survey, but parents gave input in those things were also taken into consideration and included. So I just wanted to reference that. I have a quick question, sorry. Okay. The universal pre-K, they gave you so much and then the only thing you was how many kids we got, right? Is that why the numbers start at like nine hundred? That's the amount of, 405 is the amount of change. So the current school year, we have uh, 586,000. They are saying we will receive 991,000 for the upcoming. So you think we'll get that many kids when we use all of it? We are so wondering if we have enough kids. So um, the email uh, Mike and I received, I think it was yesterday, maybe it was today, I might be mixing things up. Um, we were at 139 uh, signups or applications. 140 for um, so you have a you have a maximum number of slots but we also are in a position that the number of slots granted is higher than what we see between our two classrooms as well as the CBOs on the island so really what we've been doing is trying to allow the applications to roll in and then um, we will sit down and go over the numbers and we will go over the numbers for number of slots, but we will also go over the numbers for dollar amount to make sure that the funding can support um, every program. Okay, so this slide just shows, um, it shows really two changes. Um, the one being the uh, high impact tutoring set aside. Um, not being designated there, so that has gone back into validation aid, and then it also shows the final amount changes and where we stand on the revenue side of the budget. There have not been many differences or adjustments here outside of um, appropriated fund balance. A little less was needed to balance the budget, so you just reduce that number um, as necessary. Um, as we are becoming custom to, we do like to provide a snapshot of the things that are incorporated for the upcoming budget. So these are the 2023-2024 budget request inclusions. So you will see the increase of the art teacher from a 0.4 FTE to 0.5 um, FTE, and then there's little notations off to the side. So that is a staff number we have, it's just increasing some. Um, the 0.5 uh, FTE for English slash 0.5 FTE for teaching assistant is now going to be a 1.0 uh, FTE English teacher. Um, you will see the 1.0 elementary teacher for Kegabine. Um, we are monitoring grade K enrollment as Dr. Graham has expressed in the past. Um, if deemed necessary based on enrollment numbers being way higher, then um, we're projecting we will look at our budget and, and what's accessible and make that necessary higher, but we are waiting. 
um, community relations is going to go from a 0.5 FTE to a 0.6 FTE. Um, we also have the inclusion of SRO going from one, two, one FTE to two FTEs. Okay. Thank you. I don't want to say that wrong. Um, and we included the cybersecurity and data protection officer, which um, the 118,000 is inclusive of benefits. I always like to make sure that's mentioned. Um, flag football for uh, our young ladies is also here. Um, that's a new sport, so that'll be exciting. Um, high school elevator is mentioned here. You do see that zeroed out. We are working currently um, through receiving three quotes as well as seeing if there's any type of state contract or um, cooperative that we can go through. It is going to happen, um, but we do have an architect line where there's funding available now, so if we can get the third quote, we'll make a move on that now, and if not, we would use that next year's line to cover that cost. Um, so instead of increasing the budget, knowing that we would be able to do that um, with the funds we already have, we kept it there so the board knew we were addressing it, but it's not an increase of funds. And then we also have the transfer to food service of $22,000, which makes us at the $100,000 um, amount, which was part of the five-year plan that was developed four or five years ago, somewhere around there. Any that's, well, that's the end, that's right? Yeah, and COVID helped. Yeah. The, the, the full reimbursement from federal and state dollars for food for food service, yes, right? mm -hmm. helps um, reduce the overall deficit, which was. Well, if it wasn't for the pandemic, we would still be. Yeah. Yes. We would have to. <laughs> yes. 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 Well, thankfully, thankfully, um, there's one so, good thing that came out of the pandemic. I do want to reference here that, um, and this is for any transfer to account, right? So we have a transfer to food service account, a transfer to special education account, which is for our um, summer special ed costs. We've had that for years. And we also have a transfer to capital. If the funds are not necessary to be transferred, they don't get transferred, right? That's just how it works. So in the event that the state wants they shake everything out, say students eat for free, and those funds are no longer deemed necessary, that is general fund money. So um, right now we wouldn't do anything, I just would inform the board and the community of what's occurring. But as you plan in the future, that would be a line item that is not necessary to be used that way, and you could appropriate it somewhere else if that makes sense. I just wanted to reference that. But now you're going to want to fix it, right? Yeah. That was the plan. Okay. It was a really good plan, and you know, COVID definitely pushed it. Well, we're going to be entering into negotiations with the GITA soon. Their contract ends at the end of June next year, so it really is a contractual. Uh, it'll be part of contractual negotiations. Okay. And then the fitness center—that um, is that not in your business? Those are, yes. Okay. So the items, and I'm glad you brought that up. I apologize. So the items that were referenced as grants were going to fund them, I did not include them here because it was not a general fund. Yes. Okay. Yes. And indeed. just to clarify, that's like one fifth is the first year request, which yes. is about yeah, 15000 Yeah, but we're also doing restorative practice. Yes. The, um, the babes, the yes. mental health. Um, yes. And um, the, the nice thing about doing it through the grant, because it's a continued, and this is the only grant that I've ever seen be so continuous, but because it is that way, we are able to jumpstart on those things to make, put us really in the queue that when the school year is starting, that those things are in place versus trying to just get on the list of order and come July. So anything that was grant, delivered? Yes. And I can um, I can also include it in their budget yeah. hearing final presentation that would as be well. Helpful. Yeah, that's not that would just that would be. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 
on the next item we have here is our tax cap calculation. Um, I won't deep dive into it. I think it's very uh, explanatory. Um, I do want to um, reference that it is 3.33% per the uh, calculation. And I thought it was also important to also reference outside of us submitting this calculation every school district um, by the March 1st deadline. School districts are also randomly selected to go through an Office of State Comptroller audit. And they wait well into the April, May time and say, provide us with the supporting documentation to just cross check, making sure you're really accounting for building a debt service correctly, where your assessed values are. So um, last year, uh, I think it was around early May of 2022, we were selected and they just put you on rotation. So you, you could think this is your year and maybe it's not. You might be two years in a row, however they um, go through. But we did go through that process and we received and you're good to go. And I think it's really more so on their end that they can make sure that districts are doing with what are, uh, districts and district officials are doing what they're supposed to be doing and that the actual taxes that are being levied are allowed. So um, I assume that if you were doing that incorrectly, you would be adjusting your information and also adjusting that information with your taxpayers, just as a half -time. Any questions um, on this? And I think the project, I always said this before, I think the projections are great so you can compare one year to the next and also go back to see where you thought the rate was going to be for future years versus where it really lands. This provides the estimated um, tax rate. So it is a 56 cent change. That is 3.33% as mentioned. Um, I do show here what the uh, projected, sorry, uh, I do show here what the projected was for the 22-23 year, which was $17.10, and then where it actually came in at $16.96, and the year prior um, being $20.41, and it coming in at $16.20. Um, one thing that I um, worked with uh, Forecast 5 in helping me develop different um, analytical graphs to include, it's nice to see the numbers, but I like graphs, I think a lot of people like graphs, it's just easier. Um, and we do incorporate that in our budget book. Our budget book is available on the district website, and it will be available by May 1st, usually. If I could do it a little bit earlier, it will be up there. Um, as well as in the school buildings, that's a requirement for the state, it has to be accessible. And in that, it actually shows a 10-year um, review of where we have projected and where we've actually come in. So we started putting that in our budget book last year as well as um, breaking up program. Um, so you have capital area, you have program, and then you have administrative. So we've done all of that in graph form and started that last year. So that'll be out soon. Um, that'll allow a lot more information if people have questions of what the past has looked like. This is a full budget um, recap. So you will see our different revenue sources listed um, up above. And then we break our expenses into salary, benefits, and others. Um, this is taking in everything that you have seen in all of our past presentations, incorporating the new items that we have shown as the inclusions to get us to a total as well as us being at the um, tax cap, not exceeding the tax cap. So the proposed budget is $73,727,888. And it's down. Okay. Um, the next prop is not a new one. It is prop two, and this is for vehicle purchases. Um, we have three 65 passenger buses, um, we have one 29 passenger bus, and two Ford F-350s, 4x4 um, four four for buildings and grounds. Um, the budget to budget increase for this is zero, so um, on the proposition you will see 
Prop 2 listed um, with a lot more language per our legal requirement, and um, it will be for $675,000. And then our final proposition is uh, proposition number three, which is the establishment of a capital reserve fund. Um, we are asking for the voters to approve a $10 million reserve um, with a term time of 15 years, which means you have 15 years in which you can fund the reserve if you need longer than that to actually spend it based on how projects are planned out. The funds are still there and accessible. Um, capital reserve and repair reserves are really the two areas that school districts go out and are required to receive voter approval for. You need voter approval to fund the reserve, establish it first. You need voter um, approval as you also want to spend the money out of that reserve. Um, so usually you'll see reserves appear more than once. Um, so you will have in a proposition for a capital project, you will have the fact of the capital project being approved and it will be written in, but you do also have to establish in that uh, request that you want to use reserve funds as well as the dollar amount. You can't just say, and capital reserve. It has to say $4 million and that those funds need to be in the reserve if you're saying you're going to use it. You can't not have the money there um, and do that. I did want to make note on, you know, there were some questions on um, in, in prior meetings on do we need a capital reserve? Um, why are we doing this kind of now in, in the grand scheme of things? One, we had a reserve before, so that's expiring, so now is a great time to do it. Um, and I also want to reference, I, I don't always like when the Buffalo News puts, uh, puts articles together for school districts, but they did have something uh, last year around uh, the time of voting where they broke down Erie County and Niagara County districts and what their propositions were. And out of 37 districts that put forth their proposition to vote, um, many of them did their bus prop like we're doing. And then there was either the establishment or the drawdown from a capital reserve. Um, and there were 11 districts, so that's 30%. That, and that's just one year that went out last year in reference to um, capital reserves, and they have different ones. Uh, so we do capital. They, uh, some districts will have a capital technology reserve. They will name it specifically because they want to break it out. Um, so districts are doing it. I also found an article from the Office of State Comptroller who goes into a bit more detail on how it's not only smart for school districts to establish capital reserves, but towns and villages and just the, the way in which it helps to uh, really handle debt as well as um, any interest and legal fees you deal with with borrowing. So I just want to reference that, that we're not the first or only district doing it. Um, and it does have value, and um, there are rules and regulations for it, so it's just not something that you just get to use really nothing. So are we looking to establish it this year with $10 million? Yes, and that's just the voters saying we're okay with as you're going through year over year, um, and if you have available funds and you deem it fit, because sometimes it won't be fit, you may say, hey, we know something's coming up, let's put it in the retirement reserve because we know some change is occurring. So there is discussion around it. It doesn't automatically, as um, fund balance becomes available, it's not just place there. And Ruby, so, could you, sorry, sorry. Just, Ruby, could you just clarify that if this is approved on July 1st, we're not putting in $10, $10 million? No. Right? Okay. no. So it could be $100,000. It, yes. it could be 50000 It could be... So, what right? so the end goal is to have to that's where I was, yeah. that's where I was going with it. So, if that's right, if you're because I knew my question was wrong, the, the end goal <laughs> is to assist as you do projects. The 10 million dollar mark really just means hey, we can do this for a while, right? So, you could have a district that said, I want to establish a, a capital reserve for two million dollars. I know a district 
that is establishing capital reserves every two to three years because it's geared towards very specific things and their community is accustomed to that so it's a little bit easier um, to understand it in that regard but they do it regularly this allows for the project that we talk as we talk through um, facility needs now and it could allow a project five years from now it doesn't mean I'm you're waiting till you have 10 million to do something but as you are planning projects you are looking to see hey what do we have available in the reserve and how does the reserve help offset what we would really turn to the taxpayers to fund? I hope that addressed everybody's. No, that's okay. It's a real question. Anything else? No, and I, I appreciate this because I honestly I think when Dick Hiscus was here, he was hoping that we would have done this a few years ago. I'm gonna ask about it. So it's good that we're doing it now, and it, and it definitely supports. <clears throat> the committee work of three of our board members along with the district facilities committee as we're looking at uh, future projects. And it goes through a process. So I know for some people it's new. Some, some people don't even know like the full behind the works um, that occurs. So audit will occur. School year closes June 30th. Well, budget closes June 30th. Um, during the summer months, uh, the business office as well as other uh, clerical staff are working to make sure that we pay the things that have been necessary to pay for the prior school year as the new budget is also running. And then our auditors are coming in, I'll say end of August-ish. Um, we, we move that date depending on what the needs are. Um, the, your external auditors come in and then you pretty much do a data dump. It, and they look at general fund, federal fund, food service, everything is reviewed. And once their process is done is when we are having those discussions with our audit committee, which happens usually early October. And then the final audit is brought to the Board of Education prior to October 15th. That is the meeting that you're really approving, hey, this is where the money should go. And you're also looking at where are we with reserves, how was fund balance, what was the performance, and do we have areas of question. So, it, it really takes a while. Nothing gets funded the day after, and nobody has ten million off to the side to say, "Here you go." I think this slide lends more information not only for the board but for the community. Yes. Yes. Okay. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then we have our fund balance slide. Um, nothing changed from our last meeting. I just like to include it. Um, because when you see this again, which will be in probably early October, um, that is where you'll know, hey, where has fund balance grown or where has fund balance been utilized. Um, one thing that I do want to uh, make reference to is you will see our debt service reserve um, going from June 30th of 2020 to June 30th of 2021 you will see a decrease, and that was because we used funds to uh, pay down debt that freed up fund balance, and we use that to then um, go towards our capital project costs. And then you will see a jump of $2 million from 2021 to 2022, and that was because we had project savings, like we didn't spend all of the um, approved $24 million capital project, and there are requirements of when you get something approved, you designate funds to go towards something when you don't spend that money, it has to go into specific accounts. It's a requirement. And that is the debt service reserve. And then there are rules and regulations for the utilization of that, which is to pay down on um, building debt. Um, it's written out that way, so you don't get to change it, or I can't move those, those funds to a different line. Um, so as we look at future projects, or um, even stabilizing um, the tax cap, that is an area that can be used to do that, but the drawdown should be slow, which is what we learned a year or two ago when we had that huge increase um, because we used a large amount of funds from that account. So the drawdown should be slow and steady to uh, stabilize it instead of doing dips. Any questions? There's no questions. 
So our only summer school is at high school. Okay. Academic intervention is something that we do regularly, and here at the middle school every summer we have an academic intervention program. And the kids come to school. Uh, it's not summer school, but they do get support in ELA and math. And that's uh, organized by our school administration. And that's been, uh, that's actually was put into place by this board uh, several years ago. We have funding that was You talk about like federal funds? The COVID. the COVID funds were used in the first year for elementary, middle, and high school. So those were the ones Yep, we're, we're not moving forward with it. And we also offered transportation. You know, we, we did spend a, a significant amount of those funds to support kids in the summer. Uh, and, and by all accounts, it was a very good program. Right, that's why we used to support it. I think that was my question right. because we were moving some of those funds to other things. And right. I think what the answer was is if they, if the principal or administration felt that they needed to do anything, then we would be able to do It would just be academic intervention, not, some, not a right. summer school program. It would be five days a week. It would be, you know, from 8 to 11. It would be specific and discreet to the area of need that the child had. And it would be, again, a conversation between the parent, the teacher, and the principal. Any other questions? I think you have a motion for uh, finance item E, the budget. Or motion to approve. Okay. And a second then. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any extensions? Motion carried 7-0. Um, information only, like the fire plan and other. Well, I would like to thank Jude Cohn <laughs> for organizing, I don't know, 340, 50 pages today? 344 pages, which includes a heavy load of the fire inspection. But quite honestly, uh, Karen Rosick and people, uh, Dave Kress and others, and all of our custodians helped to put this together. And it's very significant, so thank you to everybody involved for that. That's all right. I just wanted to mention that. So that's why your packet's so big. Any questions? All right, moving on to special education. It looks like we have services A and B and action for that. Please have a motion for that. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 7 0. And that brings us to the superintendent's report, Dr. Green. Yeah, thank you very much. This will really be brief, but um, there's a lot to celebrate. We want to congratulate Annie Henneberger and Mike Murray for being uh, nominated and for winning the Western New York Education Service Council Award of Excellence. Uh, that event will be April 26 at the Creekside Banquet Hall. And uh, if you want more information, please reach out to Jude. I know we already have a pretty nice group going, right? Oh, Trump's event. Okay, but we get a lot of people chiming in, that's great. 
And uh, I want to thank John, or congratulate John Fitzpatrick for uh, receiving the Administrator of the Year through his Region 12 Sailing's Executive Committee. Congratulations to John. That's quite the honor, and that dinner and awards assembly will be May 11th at the same facility. So uh, I guess uh, I'm excited to be eating at some uh, nice space. <laughs> <laughs> they up. do a great job. They do nice. <laughs> I think so, for all of you. And this is really, it's really, this is a sp very special. And I can tell you that all three people are thrilled. And uh, for our SRPs too, I know they're really excited for Annie. She's done a lot and has had a very positive impact on all of our schools where she has worked. And there you go, there's some uh, nice pictures. Thank you to Larry Austin for taking these photos of, of uh, these truly deserving award recipients. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, it looks really good. And, you know, I want to thank the uh, Distinguished Alumni Committee. Uh, some members are here today, uh, and there's a lot of work that goes into not only reviewing those who are nominated for Distinguished Alumni, uh, the process for selecting uh, people to be advanced and inducted into the Distinguished Alumni Hall of Fame, or Hall of Fame, and I want to thank Hillary for her work and being the MC of the event, and Jude put in a tremendous amount of work, as, as well as the, uh, the committee. There was a wonderful evening event at uh, the Bridge of View, which I was able to attend, and it was really a very special time to kind of interact with families and friends of the people being inducted. And then, of course, the, the, big, um, the big program where uh, I just, I do want to mention, you know, we had three people who couldn't come and they provided video, um, influential speaking videos of the work that they're doing and then the three people who came were just riveting and, and what they had to share. Um, so, you know, so, um, I don't know, Sue, I know you were part of the committee, is there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I just, just do want to edit it down on the board. Oh, you're going to take care of it, okay. I, I can just yeah. jump in sure. here and then we can do the mic, of course. Oh. And I'm sure Jude wants to jump in too, but you know, as, as a fellow uh, Grand Island graduate, it is awesome to be a part of this great committee and to really see where our graduates can go once they spread their wings in, in, in Grand Island. And uh, we pick so many great recipients and there are so many more, right, that follow behind. But this year, I mean, we had a naval flight surgeon, we had a former director of defense research and engineering um, for research and technology, he worked in the Pentagon the day of 9-11. His office was hit when the plane struck the Pentagon that day. Um, and he had to return to work the next day because he had to go back to work to defend our country. Lois Gibbs, who was active in the, um, in the act of being an activist for the Gulf Canal, for those of you that know what that is, um, Brian Castellani, a uh, phenomenal uh, finance career with ESPN, ABC, and uh, Disney World. Kelly Landon, who lives in Africa and saves elephants. Um, she has quite a um, great foundation down there, does dope, fantastic work. And uh, Jeff Stone, who is uh, an attorney partner and very active in our community and does a lot of work in education. So when we sit here as a board and as administrators and principals and teachers, Grand Island can give you the education to do anything you want. If they, you can go anywhere, you can do anything. Your foundation is built within these, I'll say four walls, but there's many more than that. Um, and I will also say, not only did they speak of their experiences and all of the amazing work they've done in their career since leaving Grand Island High School, I will tell you their message was very clear to follow your passion. Every one of them who spoke or sent in a video spoke of following their passion um, into their career. So uh, lots of words of wisdom. I know the students saw it. If you have not had a chance to um, take a look at the presentations, um, I would highly recommend it. Um, they, uh, they spoke very well, and their um, journey since Grand Island High School have truly been distinguished. So um, thank you for letting me be a part of it, and really um, congratulations to all of them and to all of our nominees. And I don't know if she wants to piggyback on that. She's also on the committee. And she does phenomenal work that would be able to put it all together without her. Yeah, she played a round table. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, you're good. Yeah, it's also that we can skip that. We can stop too.
So this was uh, just some candid pictures or pictures taken by Larry Austin, so we thank you for that. Uh, we do have a very important vaping conversation led by uh, Kids Escaping Drugs and Family Support Services. That will be May 3rd at 6 o'clock in the high school auditorium. We really encourage families to come uh, as we engage, obviously, in our budget. We're approving uh, vape detectors to use in middle school and high school. Uh, along with that, when we're talking to students uh, in our uh, principal and superintendent advisory board, we're hearing more and more from kids that they think this is a problem, not only on Grand Island, but all across the United States. I think uh, the Attorney General of New York State just uh, uh, was part of other states winning you know, almost $500 million in uh, fines uh, from uh, a company called Juul uh, because of their marketing toward children. So this is a really, really important event. We encourage families to join us for this uh, honest conversation. And you know, I, I sometimes I, I tease or joke with our high school administration, but I can tell you they're working really hard to help uh, get kids on a better path. And I can also tell you that kids are using uh, different, many, many different uh, devices to vape, not just what you typically might see in a movie or in a TV show. Um, and so I think, honestly, each day, not only am I being educated, but I know our high school administration team uh, can be surprised sometimes at the variety of vape devices that are uh, available uh, to students, whether they're just available at home or at the local store or however they're getting them. And I'm just going to add this one thing. Um, talk, you know, Hillary and I talked to students in our advisory, uh, our student advisory group, and they tell us that there are, are children selling um, vape devices using Snapchat and Instagram to reach out to their peers. And it's happening more and more than, than people realize. So uh, this is a great conversation for parents to, to help uh, get a better understanding of what's happening. I want to thank our Jessica Hutchins and Cheryl and the family support team for putting this together and encourage everybody to attend. Just a couple, you know, we, spring was here momentarily, um, and there, were, there was some really beautiful weather and kids having a great time uh, on our complex. And I don't know what Mr. Willis is doing here, but he, he seemed like he was enjoying spring and, and baseball. Uh, we encourage everybody to go and see some of the spring sports that our student ambassadors talked about it today. I know that uh, Unified Basketball is also just around the corner. In fact, I think it's next week, uh, home game, maybe Friday, perhaps, maybe, I think. But um, that's going to be just so wonderful uh, to check that out. If you have never been to uh, a unified basketball game or, you know, match, we encourage you to do that. That's uh, the 28th, the home game is around 5 o'clock. And, and uh, Larry Austin started a new e-bridge or a digital version of a newsletter. Um, <clears throat> he got this out in March. I know he's working on another one, but the priority is getting the uh, budget uh, presentation or the bridge uh, newsletter out to all families and residents. That, say, that's the one that's mailed, right? right? But then after that, you're going to see more and more digital newsletters coming out to our families. And uh, I want to always thank uh, families who reach out to me or a principal or a trusted teacher when they think something is wrong or children are not safe. Please continue to talk to a trusted adult, uh, you know, whether your child is, is feeling as though or perceiving that they're being harassed uh, or that they're unsafe. Uh, please make sure you're always communicating to a trusted adult. And if by uh, any means that you don't feel comfortable talking to a trusted adult, Anybody in our entire community can use the like and tip line. So thank you very much. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Um, so that brings us to the Board of Education report and the Erie One Bosons budget vote in election. Um, if I could have a motion to approve uh, A and B, please. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any extensions? Motion carried 7 0. And then we have the uh, Grand Island Health and Wellness Day. Yes, that's tomorrow from 5 to 7, which is excited. Um, 
Kate, the middle school nurse, she reached out to our trip, so now we have student nurses um, coming in with blood pressures. And when I reached out to give the information to my former professor from NTRIP, she said she was extra excited because she is an alumni in Grand Island. So I thought that was really neat. Um, so she's so excited to come back and bring the students. Um, I think that's a really great event. We have like around 30 vendors, um, lots of interaction, um, lots of different people um, and just flows of the whole. So super excited. 5 to 7 in here. Uh, 5 to 7 at the high school. No. And you don't have to be here right at 5, right? I have Conflicts you can't be here at five. Mm -hmm. Don't come later. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, people can come later if there's a conflict. Yeah, there's not a. There's some activities that are scheduled, um, like for a half hour gotcha. each time. But um, they're scheduled throughout the whole event. So if you come later, you can still do. Thank you, and thank you for all your hard work uh, putting that together, Sherry. We appreciate um, your efforts with that. We did not, as we talked about the distinguished alumni um, already, so we will move on to the public comment session. General items not included in this agenda. We did not have anyone to sign up for that. So that brings us to a committee of the whole, items and information for the round table, beginning with one. I'm all set. Sherry. Mr. Fitzpatrick, I am so excited that you won that award. And I'm going to say that because I have two quick stories that I have to share. Um, I only worked with you for a year, very short, but it was impactful. Um, I remember the first week of school, there was a bunch of sixth graders who know nothing about middle school and were very lost and scared. And they were walking down the hall and you were in the hall, but there was four adults and all the kids came to you. And one by one, they actually created a line. They didn't go to anybody else. They just went to you and I think it was because you're safe and you make them feel, you know, comfortable. And I just loved it because all of us were standing there with nothing to do because every single one of them wanted to go to you and ask for help. Because when you talk to kids, you just you appreciate them and care for them. I mean, it's, I remember that day, I was like, yeah, I can work for him. He's, he seems like a really good guy. Um, but also during COVID, um, there was so much going on. And I remember, um, you know, everybody had an opinion, everybody had thoughts, especially me. And we would email back and forth. I can't even remember what it was about. Um, but you would, we were going back and forth on something. And I remember finally I was like, listen, I'm not trying to argue with you. I feel really bad, but you know, I feel this way. And the first thing you said was, it's okay to argue. We need to argue through this so that we have a successful outcome. And that's what leadership is to me. It's empowering those that you lead. It's giving them a voice. And I think that you do that. Um, and I know you did that for me. So I'm so excited to be on this board. to say congratulations again to all the distinguished alumni and it was so awesome to get together again with the student body. It was the first time in four years so that was amazing. You know, to have the kids and you could hear a pin drop. I mean, when those videos were playing and the speakers, you know, the um, award winners were um, speaking and everything, they did such an amazing job. It was, it was awesome. And thank you, shout out to Hillary. You did an amazing job emceeing. Thank you so much. It was awesome. And, um, pardon me, oh, Mr. Hauser, <coughs> Mr. Hauser, <coughs> yes, Mr. Thank Hauser, God yeah, bless him, he came um, as uh, one of our teachers that used to teach back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe late 60s, he didn't start right in 63 when the uh, high school opened or anything, but shortly after, he was one of the most mentioned teachers by all the alumni. And everybody, everybody had a story. And he was so touched. He, I was sitting next to him, and every time somebody mentioned him, he was like, again? And I go, you're a rock star. I go, you are a rock star. I go, look at you. But yeah, so he, he was very touched by that. And stuff. I also want to say good luck to the Brown High School DACA. The three um, students from the high school are going to the national competition on Friday to Florida, in Orlando. So we're leaving on Friday, and thank you again to Mrs. Um, Chamberlain and Ms. Rute for all they do, for DECA and everything to get these students to this level, the national level. So good luck to them. I'm excited to hear how they did. Thank you. Yes, good luck to our DECA students, and thank you for all of our all the hard work for with our advisors, um, Ms. Rute and Mrs. Chamberlain, put in so much time organizing all the, the trips and the competitions and just it's a lot of work. Um, 
thank you, Jude, for all of your hard work with the Distinguished Alumni Celebration. I, a little birdie told me we may have left the bridge at 11 o'clock on Thursday, 11 p.m., so uh, we know all of the extra hours and just, you know, I'm sure you were in the next morning very early, and yes. <laughs> so, um, yes, happy birthday. birthday. And um, I wanted to congratulate John and Mike and Annie on the awards, definitely well-deserved. And I love it when I see our faculty, administrators, and staff recognized, because we have so many deserving faculty um, and staff and administrators here on Grand Island. Um, so thank you for all of your um, work with our students and your dedication. To go to the congratulations, I will be at both dinners to help you celebrate and receive your awards. So for Mr. Fitzpatrick, Mr. Murray, and Andy, I will be in attendance at both. Um, and I just have not said it in a while, and I just don't want anybody to forget that July 7th, we are having a golf tournament. It does benefit our students. So dust off those golf clubs or buy golf clubs, get your golf lessons going. We would love to see you all there. Thank you. Ditto again. Congratulations, John. You know, well deserved, and also congratulations to Mary and Andy. Again, well deserved. Come out and vote. We got one more meeting. I will see you all. May 8th is when we have our budget hearing. So I think it happens a little bit before the board meeting. It starts a presentation and also allows people to have a conversation. Has any questions in the in between email call? Um, you have to address questions and be able to share that information with the committee so everybody uh, is aware. Just one mention to the budget. I'm sorry, I just didn't throw out the date for um, April 25th, which is the island wide PTA meeting. Um, I believe it will be Dr. Harris will be there to do a, a budget presentation to anybody there in attendance as well. Um, I know I am planning on being there because there are usually other board members at a time. So there will be another opportunity to hear our budget and ask us any questions before we vote on the 16th. Sorry, I didn't The only thing I would add is our, our track and field coaches are doing something really special tomorrow. Uh, at their home meets and their, the children, the, the athletes are going to be recognizing teachers that have influenced or inspired them tomorrow. It's just kind of a similar theme to celebration of inspiration, but a little special carve out for track and field tomorrow. So that's going to happen parallel to uh, the district wellness uh, fair. So if you love track and field, you want to go and see some of that and come and enjoy the district wellness uh, activities. It should be a great night. Thank you. A couple of reminder dates. May 8th, Board of Education meeting at 7.30 p.m., budget hearing at 7 p.m. May 16th is the annual budget vote and Board of Education election, um, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the high school gym. Um, with that, I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn our regular board meeting at 9 p.m. I'll motion. And a second? I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Aye. Any abstentions? Motion carries 7-0. Good night. Thank you. And the students can get signatures up here.